hey everybody, I'm back. I've got a special guest today. As this podcast shows, there is going to be a movement from print to internet and from television to internet for people getting information about bird hunting. A fellow has preceded me by a number of years with a very uh, cool upscale website for bird hunters. The website is uh, www.uplandjournal.com. The guy who runs it is Brad Eden. Brad lives out in Maine. He's on the phone with me now. And good morning, Brad. How you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Okay. How are you doing? I, I'm doing cool. Yeah. Great. I'm sitting here with a fresh cup of coffee and... <laughs> Confess it to everybody. I'm sitting in my bathrobe too. I've had too much coffee this morning. I spent too much time on my website, so <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty hyper. But there's been no, no, no major problems on on the board today, so I'm happy. Every, everybody's happy and having a good time. Tell me about how you got the idea to create the Upland Journal website and bulletin board. Well, um, basically, I've been bird hunting since I was in my mid-teens, and it's just been an obsession, and my life has been led by that. I made a living as a commercial artist, graphic designer, illustrator, and I just decided that to create an online magazine with a bulletin board would be a, a good way to bring all those uh, life experiences together. At the point when I had first came up with the concept of an online magazine and a bulletin board, the, uh, there was a, it was the beginning of the sporting bulletin boards that you were starting to see pop up which was probably back in the early 2000s. And I just decided that there was a particular type of bulletin board that I thought I wanted to own and moderate that I think would be a place that other upland hunters might enjoy joining me on. And so in 2002, I launched the Upland Journal magazine and the uh, Upland Talk bulletin board. Okay, tell me about the difference between the two. The the site itself is, is sort of evolved into into two separate parts. There's the online magazine, which uh, the concept behind that was uh, I was finding that most of, the, most of the websites in general were very cold and sterile. And I wanted to, to create a, uh, an online magazine presence that was, had the kind of the warm flavor that you find in some of the better sporting magazines. Right. You know, in layout and design and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I think we've been pretty successful in that because we've won some awards, some design awards for the, for the site. What kind of awards were those that you've won? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a State of Maine award, actually, uh, back in 2003 or 2004. We didn't enter too many. We don't enter every year, but we actually beat out L.L. Bean and, like, Oakhurst Dairy and Blueberry Councils for the, uh, the best in this category and the best website at the show. That's really cool. All right. Yeah. But the other side of it, you know, to answer your question is that, you know, there's the bulletin board, and, and the bulletin board is the heart and soul of the site. I learned that very quickly, that... Um, and it's kind of tempered my development of the online magazine. I mean, my first thought was I was going to have a, a real bona fide online magazine, which would, would which would repopulate itself with the editorial and stories every, you know, maybe bi-monthly, et cetera. But I found that the concentration it, it was on the bulletin board. When people, they came on the site and they liked what they saw, and then they discovered the bulletin board, and that's where they pitched their tent. Uh-huh. And so I find that with limited time I have, since it, it is – still somewhat of a hobby business, that I'd rather concentrate my efforts on maintaining and promoting the community that's on the bulletin board. Uh, in the future, I have, the sky's the limit as far as what I want to do with the, with the magazine side of the site and the bulletin side, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps me understand a lot. Now, it's since 2002, this is 2006, you've had four years to grow. Uh, mm -hmm. How many people come a day or so to that? Do you, do you have any numbers on oh, that? Oh, jeez, you're going to ask me all that technical stuff. Well, no, just give me some ballparks. I don't have my, my paperwork in front of me here. Basically, my numbers are off the charts. I'm a front-end designer kind of guy, and I don't really pay a lot of attention to the back-end type of stuff that goes on. But I've got 2,500 unique visitors a day. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm reading, I'm reading this off a, an email from my web server guy, yeah. uh, and he says here that it doesn't count the people that come back multiple times a day. I've had 75,000 unique visitors this month, and I averaged 22,000 page views, and then he says 663,000 page views so far this month, 730,000 page views last month. I mean, it, yeah. the, num the numbers, the people that are... Visiting the site and the bulletin board are pretty robust. At any one time on the bulletin board, you know, there's 
it's built into the data, you can see that there could be anywhere between any time, 24-7, 365 days a year at this point, there can be anywhere between 50 to 100 people on the bulletin board. That doesn't mean necessarily, necessarily mean people that are logged Sure, they're on, just right? watching. Participate. Sure. But there's lurkers and there's guests. People are finding it a, an entertainment place, but also a resource where I have writers that I know come in, and they basically they, they look around, they get ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll actually they'll ask me, can I pose a question on your board, Brad? I'm doing a story about this, that, and the other thing. I've had writers come in and ask. Uh, I like it when they ask me first, obviously. Right. They've asked me. I have a woman that uh, asked for photos of bird dog, gun dogs, who's a woman in Georgia, a writer. And she's actually putting together a book on, on gun dogs, and she's going to be using some photography supplied by my membership. That's ideal. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Do people actually develop contacts outside of the, you know, do they meet on the bulletin board, talk, and then say, <laughs> oh, let's get together and meet each other face to face? That's probably, that's probably the key. That's pro- it's, 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 it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, I don't even know what's going on right now out there. There's so many get-togethers going on. There's so much goodwill going on. I mean, I, I actually established an entire forum based upon, it's called Upland Journal Get-Togethers where people across the United States are meeting on the board. There's personal messaging systems built into the board and the emailing, and they just, it's basically kind of like a, a rolling, it's just, it's, it's taken on a life of its own, basically. You know, this is, uh, this is the exciting part of what the Internet can offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, as we both know, we hunt for three months a year if we're lucky, and then we've got nine months that either we kind of let it go to sleep or we can still keep our enthusiasm up by talking to like-minded people. It appears that you're getting a lot of like-minded people having the opportunity to talk about any subject they want. Now, do you let subjects stray? Do people sometimes Um, get into other areas other than things like shotguns, dogs, etc.? I think part of the formula I found successful at this point, which I will not break, is I... This is my a labor of love. This is my business. Right. It's not some big corporation owns it. Um, it's not moderators that are making a salary. I own it. I moderate it, and I'm fiercely protective of it. Uh, I'm lucky that I have I have one full time moderator who's a great guy, Alan Breer from from uh, a photographer from New Hampshire, who does a wonderful job for me. And I have some anonymous moderators that help me when I'm away on trip business trips or vacations. But Basically, the, it, the tone is a, a very civil tone. I mean, I, 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 I'm very strict with what goes on on the board. It's funny. You'll probably find this amusing. I have what I called my 14-year-old daughter rule. I have a daughter who's now 15 who does webmastering for me. I mean, she sure. goes on and helps me prune forums, etc. And I kind of generally base it. If there's something that's going on on the board, the subject matter that I feel uncomfortable that my 14-year-old daughter is going to read, that's kind of an indication to me that you know maybe that's not appropriate. The, the, the board is a focus on upland, upland hunting, and there is a focus on grouse and woodcock, because that's all I really know. But, I mean, that does not even begin to, to cover the, all the other birds and, and species that, are, that the membership hunts from out west, et cetera. There is a general discussions area where, you know, I try to keep things in the sporting arena, but that doesn't always happen. It's, it's, it's kind of you take every topic topic by topic. What happens is people have taken such ownership of the board itself that I have a lot of self-policing going on. In other words, it's important to a lot of my membership to maintain a civil and a good tone to the, to the board itself. So if somebody comes on with a very political uh, subject or something very vulgar, I'll be notified of it. And in addition, my membership, they won't be baited into it. You know what I mean? They won't be baited into right. an argument. Or they, this doesn't always happen. Don't get me wrong. I've been up late at night, and I've got a big bottle of Advil next to my computer. <laughs> but generally speaking, um, it's up and down all the time. I mean, the majority of the time, I sit down at, at, at the computer with a smile on my face, and I leave the computer with a smile on my face. How many hours do you spend on the computer a day? I couldn't even really count. Between the basic development of the site and the, the upgrading the maintaining, which I rely a lot of my back-end people on, it all depends on what my work schedule is. I mean, I, I still make a living as, a con, as an art director consultant, and I also write a, a monthly column for a regional magazine. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm trying to knock down today. I write and illustrate a column. Probably could be two or three hours a day up to eight hours a day. It's, you know, Chris, it's hard to say. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not, it's, I'm a participant as well. I don't just sit there and moderate and hover above everything. Right. I mean, I, I walk that fine line between the, being the owner, the moderator, but also a participant. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Right. You know, yeah. I really like what you said about the 14-year-old girl rule. Yeah. This past weekend, I was out uh, taping the 
North American Gun Dog Association National Championships. I met a family there that I thought epitomized all that can be good in our sport. Mm -hmm. A father and a mother both hunt, but they came to hunting as adults. They had a 16-year-old son and a 11-year-old daughter. The 16-year-old son is an All-American Sporting Clays Junior Champion and oh. the champion of Missouri for that. They treated their dogs impeccably well. They treated each other with enormous courtesy. And I did a nice interview with them, which will be seen on my uh, podcast here a little later. Great. And I just said, here it is, folks. You know, the, the hunting public often gets a pretty bad rap mm -hmm. in terms of the urban eye. Mm -hmm. Urban eyes don't understand what we do. And if we can continue to emphasize the wholesomeness, the family, uh, the values of conservation and courtesy, then I think you and hopefully I will be making a contribution to the continued betterment of our sport. I, I, I agree with you. And, uh, and I think you know, that's reflected in, in, in what I'm trying to do here is we've got, we've got young people. I've got young, young, young people that come on the board with their first bird dog or they want to ask good place. I have like 14, 15 year olds that will come on. And I also have a, what's great is I have a wide, wide audience of women, I have, uh, participating members that are women mm -hmm. who have told me uh, time and time again that they appreciate the fact that they feel comfortable. It's not, it's not just a man's club right. uh, on, the, on this, this bulletin board community. And they feel comfortable for the most part to come on. That they're active participants. And it, it really gives the, a, a really nice addition to the site to have that cross-section of people there. With that said, like, you know, the days when I could allow just, you know, anybody could come on at any point in time and log on and, and, and register and, all, and immediately be able to participate, meaning uh, reply and stop doing topics, that ended a couple of years ago. For every dozen people out there that want to contribute and be positive participants in this type of venture, there's always one person that wants to get up late at night, register and log on to these bulletin boards and cause nothing but havoc. So at this point, um, I authorize when people register on, on my board, uh, I review the I review the registration information, which gives me little you know little red flags will go up if if I think something looks fishy, and then I will I will authorize that person. And usually, I'm finding I'm authorizing between probably six to eight new memberships for participation a week. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I think that we've said what we need to do. Is there anything else you would like my listeners to hear about this endeavor of yours that we might not have covered? Well, I'll tell you. I'd like to mention the fact that, that you know, I, I work with great people. I mean, this isn't outside of the obvious, you know, the board, the heart, the soul, is the membership on my bulletin board. But in addition, I never could have done this without uh, the help of, uh, of a designer friend of mine, Pete Roberts, with his firm, Insight New Media. Um, and that's a plug. Uh, he helped me design the site, and he continues to help me. On podcasting, we plug anything well, we like. Right. Well, again, I just, I, I really, this is my best, this is one of my best buddies. He's my design associate. I'm an associate art director at his, at his new media design firm in Farmington, Maine. And he's just been instrumental in every aspect of the Upland Journal site. And, and again, in addition to that, I've got a great web host server, a small company called Rainstorm Consulting, which is up in Orono, Maine. And it's the kind of company that I can call 24-7 and they're there for me. Because uh, you probably you understand this, uh, Chris. If my, my bulletin board has a burp, uh, people just they're 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 somewhat addicted to it, and yep. they just they need their Upland Journal. Right. And so it's great to have web people that have my back, and that can that can do my upgrades. It can help me with with with, with the development of the site. And, uh, you need that. You know, I've got two people like that right now with my podcasting. A guy named John Miller, who has a company called Treeline Productions. John was my uh, director producer in the field for my last year he also has done a uh, expedition to Everest and has made a movie about Everest I always get a kick out of saying when people look at the camera when we're out shooting they say oh that looks pretty good camera I said yeah this thing was all the way up to 22,000 feet on Mount Everest and wow. then I and then I got a gal Tina Hagerling who takes care of everything on the technical side uh, at the web right well, you got a good-looking website too, Chris. So whoever's doing your your design, your graphics, your front-end work, which is kind of what I do. Yes, she uh, did that. I, I, I can have respect for that. It looks good. And so, and like you, I'm the um, figurehead, the masthead. But boy, mm -hmm. without that support, people, you just you wouldn't be anywhere. You'd be dead. No, no, you wouldn't. Frustrating thing for me right now is this industry is moving so fast. 
um, that I'm actually, I'm still in central Maine in the boonies working on dial-up. Well, people hear that I run this site, this board on dial-up, they, they faint, but I do. <laughs> um, and, um, fr- you know, obviously it's a frustration because I just don't have high-speed Internet available to me here. Yeah. I've got a satellite, which I'm seriously looking into. So site and the board tend to plot along based upon how much time I can put into it and, and based upon my, my restrictions with dial-up. I am working towards, I have a lot of big ideas for the site to push a lot of the different aspects of the site and allow additional capabilities to not only people on the board, but just enhancements to the site itself. Again, the sky's the limit. It's a matter of, of just uh, moving along at a pace I'm comfortable with and, and continuing, continuing onward. Yep. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to have you back because I'd like to have an interview about you because I think you mm-hmm. yourself might be a pretty interesting guy. We've talked about your journal. And then, yeah, um, so. yeah, and then in six to eight months, we're going to interview you again about the journal. Great. Sounds excellent. To all of my uh, listeners, uh, if, if you haven't gone to www.uplandjournal.com, do so. And to those people who are, who are already on the Upland Journal, now you get to hear the guy that's behind the thing that you've been visiting all these years and months. <laughs> this means I don't have to go out and meet too many people. <laughs> I am, I am a hermit. Okay, that yeah, sounds like it. Okay, hey man, everybody, this is Chris Hagaseth thanking you all. I'm pleased to report that our numbers are, they're not quite increasing exponentially, but they're increasing faster than arithmetically, and if you remember geometry, that's a really good deal. Until next time, I'm going to say goodbye. Spoil the heck out of your bird dogs because they deserve every bit of it. Bye-bye.